of all the homegrown EV startups in India over the last three odd years, you've really got to respect the approach that Bengaluru-based River has taken. No noise, no big claims, no one even knew they existed until earlier this year when they unveiled this, their first product, the Indy. Now that River says it's finally ready to start production and sell scooters to customers, we're getting a chance to ride it and see what it's like. What makes it different is that River is not trying to make just another typical family or sporty scooter. Instead, the Indy goes down the unique route of aiming to offer both utility as well as a premium experience. And that has a big impact on the design. The Indy looks like nothing else and that is a good thing. Two things will immediately stand out to you. The first is that it has 14-inch wheels which makes it one of the first EVs in India to offer that. The second is that this is quite a large and quirky looking machine. The face is all about that large and cheerful twin pod headlamp as well as the flowing bodywork behind it that neatly houses a storage compartment. There's a motorcycle style set of clip-on handlebars and you even get built-in crash protection bars along the side apron. Another unusual feature is the fact that it has front foot pegs. River says that this can be used when the floorboard is full of stuff. And in case you're wondering, yes, a gas cylinder will fit on that floorboard. The side profile looks more squared off and utilitarian, but there are some interesting elements here as well. Those black alloy mounts under the seat can be used to strap items or to mount accessory panniers that River will sell separately. They can also be used as grab handles if you like. The actual grab handle at the back has two slots in it, which you can also use as anchor points for bungee cords or bag straps. That's the utilitarian aspect, but the rear end also looks quite nice thanks to an expensive looking aluminium swing arm and that neatly designed tail lamp. Now this is by no means a classically beautiful design, but it is a fun looking thing and in these bright colours, it will surely put a smile on your face. What's also nice is that there's amazing utility on offer. This booth space is 43 litres big. That's massive, way bigger than the Ola's as well. And there's an additional 12 litre space in the front. This kind of utility on a scooter in India is quite unparalleled. What's nice is that all this practicality hasn't come at the expense of this scooter feeling cheap, compromised or ugly in any way. The feel-good factor is high, especially when you notice the smaller details like the subtle river branding within the lights or the almost GTA Vice City style font of the 3D river logo. Fit and finish is mostly quite good, but there is some room for improvement in the switch gear. The bodywork fits together quite well, but the charging port cover feels a bit flimsy and it can only be opened after you open the front storage space and this could get tedious with long-term usage. Beyond that, this scooter feels quite solid and well-made. Speaking of solid, at 140 kilos, the Indy is at least 20 kgs heavier than most Indian scooters, if not more. Then again, this also feels larger than the typical scooter and you'll mainly sense that through some extra weight in the steering at lower speeds. The Indy is by no means cumbersome to ride, but it certainly isn't as light and agile as the typical Indian scooter either. The Indy is a fairly large scooter and if you're a bigger rider, you will find this to be one of the most spacious scooters currently available. There's plenty of room on the seat and the handlebar won't foul with your knees either. If anything, I did find that the seat was a little too low on long durations and putting my feet out on these foot pegs really did help that. But then again, I am quite tall, so let's take the perspective of some other people. Let's start with Zaran. At 5 foot 8, he's far more representative of the average Indian height. And as you can see, he's got both his feet firmly on the floor and he thinks this is a very comfortable riding position. But we also have Roshni here with us. She's 5 foot 2 and this is what she looks like on the bike. Surprisingly, both her feet are also on the floor and she thinks that this is perfectly manageable.
So the Indy will fit a wide variety of riders, but it also ensures that they will be quite comfortable on the move as well. Both the seat and the suspension are set a little on the firm side, but in a good way. You will never feel like the suspension is soft or plush, but the Indy handles rough and rutted surfaces with surprisingly good composure. The 14-inch wheels also bring in a planted, stable feel, and with those wide MRF zapper tyres, there's plenty of grip. From a sheer ride quality standpoint, I think River has done a great job, and the scooter remains comfortable and composed even when you have a pillion on board. Speaking of, there's plenty of space and comfort for a passenger at the back as well. Handling-wise, that super-planted, stable feel continues, but the Indy does restrict how much fun you can have on a winding road. That's because it scrapes its floorboards quite easily, and that limits how much fun you can have with it. This is a pity, because it feels like the chassis has a lot more potential. Nevertheless, River isn't pitching the Indy as a sporty machine, and they actually call it the SUV of scooters, so I suppose outright handling isn't that important. On the whole SUV topic, if you get tempted to ride it off-road, you'll find that the big wheels and stability are your friends here as well. However, the ground clearance is adequate but not outstanding, and the scooter will scrape over big obstacles. So yeah, think of this as a rugged scooter rather than an off-roader. Weight is the biggest enemy of an EV when it comes to range, and River have tried hard to work around this problem by creating a complex regeneration function. In fact, if you're wondering what these silver things on top of the caliper are, they're basically brake pressure sensors that give information back to the scooter and help it to dial in the perfect amount of regen when you're using the brakes. The regen system actually works quite well, and it never feels artificial like on some other EVs. Different modes have different levels of regen, and while it's not user-tunable, it always feels smooth and predictable. The actual braking performance itself is strong, but also quite sharp, and newer riders may find this a little intimidating. There is no ABS, although the combined braking system does a decent job of limiting rear-wheel lockup under hard braking. As for actual range numbers, we'll have to fully test the scooter to see how these efforts have paid off. In our few hours with the Indy, we were on track to cover about 75 kilometers using a mix of the middle and top riding modes, which is on par with what the company claims. Those are decent but not outstanding numbers for a 4 kilowatt hour battery pack. What's nice is that you can use the faster modes right until the battery hits 12% state of charge. The Indy will ship with an 800 watt charger, and it won't fit in the front storage compartment in case you're wondering. River says they are also working on an accessory fast charger as well as a lower cost portable charger which will have a lower wattage. In the meantime, here's what the promised charging speeds with a standard charger look like. The Indy gets a mid-mounted electric motor that sends power to the rear wheel via a concealed belt drive. It can hit a top speed of about 90 km per hour, and it feels quite quick. Performance-wise, I'd say this is closer to an Aether 450S, and it's definitely not as rapid as the Aether 450X or the Ola S1 Pro. Still, this amount of performance is more than enough for a scooter. There are three riding modes, Eco, Ride and Rush. Eco cap speeds at about 55 kph, ride at around 70 to 75 kph, and rush lets you hit 90 km per hour. Although most people will end up spending most of their time in ride mode because eco feels a little too held back, while rush is quite urgent and good for the occasional short burst of fun riding. River promises an incline gradability of 18 degrees and has made sure that this will work even in eco mode. We rode the scooter at pretty high speeds for long durations on hilly roads, and there was no noticeable drop in performance, which is commendable. Refinement is quite good as well, and while it isn't as quiet as the hub-mounted motor in the TVS iCube, it definitely isn't as loud as the Aether 450's motor either. So the Indy is fun to ride, but what about features? Well, it would seem that River focused more on the riding experience than loading this thing full of crazy gadgets. But what you do get is quite nicely executed. 
There is no TFT display, but the 6-inch segmented color LCD unit is clean and neatly laid out. There's no Bluetooth compatibility either, but the scooter will ship with a built-in eSIM that enables a lot of functionality via a mobile app. Unfortunately, this app was not yet ready for us to try out. There are also two USB chargers and a pretty strong LED light in the underseat boot. The one feature we missed having was a hill hold function of some sort, especially on such a heavy scooter, although River says they are working on this. There is a forward and reverse parking assist and you can have a main stand as an accessory. In fact, River plans to offer many practical and well thought out accessories, including side pannier cases and a top box. You can also get a removable cage for the floorboard and a neat looking windscreen that gels nicely with the Indies lines. The company is also offering a 5 year warranty. So, how much will all this cost you? In Feb earlier this year, River announced a 1.25 lakh rupee ex showroom price, but that was before the big slash in the Fame 2 subsidy. The company says that this price will be honoured, but only for those customers in Bengaluru who pre booked the scooter at the initial launch. The first showroom will open in Bengaluru soon, and following those initial deliveries, River will hike the price and expand the availability. The company is targeting a presence in 25 to 30 cities next year. We're quite impressed by what River has managed to achieve with the Indy, and I'm still a little unsure about how the company has managed to fully develop this product from the grounds up in such a short time frame. Nevertheless, at its launch price, this represented amazing value, but that price no longer is applicable. We don't know what the final price will be, but I hear it's going to be a significant hike, so we're going to have to wait and see. Hopefully, River will still manage to undercut the top Aether and Ola models. As with all EV startups, River still has a long way to go when it comes to establishing a good sales network and proving the long-term reliability of their product. But this is a great first start.